Uh, my name is Gene Rice. I'm happy to be here this evening to talk a little bit about critical thinking and prepping for the GRE. Uh, I am the chair of the philosophy department and I teach uh, a variety of things including logic over the years and uh, so that makes me an expert in critical thinking. Uh, let's go around the room and tell me who you are and uh, what your academic discipline is. Uh, and we'll start here. Okay. Um, I'm Kate Hasty, um, second year grad student in the clinical psych program. I'm um, planning to do a PhD program in either clinical psych or counseling psych after this. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. I don't know that I knew that part of it. Mm -hmm. Good. Do you know where you're going to go? Um, I've got a list of about 20 schools narrowed down, and I'm going <laughs> to narrow it down further because it's real expensive. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good yeah. to see you. I'm Connor Phelan. I'm getting my bachelor's in geosciences. Oh. I'm just hoping to get my master's. Okay. I'm not sure where yet. Yeah, excellent. Who's your um, your um, major advisor? Keith Bramer. Keith Bramer, I don't know yet. Very good. Um, I'm Jessica Johnson. I am in my major program, um, exercise science, exercise physiology. Okay. Um, I hope to get a PhD after this. I don't know where. Yeah, good. Yeah. Good. School's fun. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, my name is Liz Smith. I'm a senior majoring in speech language pathology, and I'm currently doing applications for three different grad schools. All right. Good. Um, I'm Morgan Weber. I'm a sophomore majoring in speech pathology. So I'm doing <laughs> Okay, very good. I'm Kayla Reed. I'm a junior, and I'm um, double majoring in organizational leadership and speech language pathology. Oh, excellent. That's an interesting. I'm Leslie Watson, and I'm here for the psychology department and hope to pursue a, B a PhD as soon as possible. Okay. Excellent. And are you here to monitor me, or are you here to learn as well? Kind of both. Okay. Um, I'm Paula Dello. I'm an elementary education major, so eventually I'll probably go to grad school. Um, but I'm actually the academic coordinator, so I'm the one who kind of helps set these up. So that's what I'm here for. And then we have our videotaper over here. Oh, I'm Ellie Richter. I'm an undecided major, so I don't really know what I'll end up doing. That's her. That's and her. she's on the academic committee, so she's volunteering to videotape for us. Great, thank you. Well, um, it's a nice range of disciplines. As we'll see here, the GRE exam is really not content-based in this section. That is to say, they're not going to give you really complicated questions about psychology or uh, exercise physiology or something. They're going to be general topic areas that anyone can think about you know, without um, too much trouble. So that has both advantages, obviously, and some disadvantages that we'll talk about um, as we go along. So before I get into what we're going to do, I'm going to give you some definitions, talk a little bit about critical thinking, give you some resources, and then we're going to do a couple of the practice uh, test together, okay, to kind of work through what it is that they're asking you to do. And uh, so let's start with resources. Uh, the GRE has a website, you know, that explains what the test is about, and it gives a topic pool and some, um, both some student or taker um, results and then the scoring from the judges. So that's relatively helpful. We'll look at a couple of the topic sessions. Uh, today uh, or this evening. Another really great um, resource is the Foundation for Critical Thinking. And this is, uh, let's see, what is it? Criticalthinking.org. And I believe it's a nonprofit. It's run by Linda Elder and um, a couple of other folks. And it's really good. Uh, we're going to look at a little bit of their material here. But they have super cheap uh, little booklets, like for two or three dollars a piece, that talk about uh, critical thinking in general. They talk about critical thinking in particular disciplines. Not all the disciplines are listed, but that can be really helpful in thinking about how critical thinking manifests and is employed in, in different types of disciplines. So I think that's a really great resource. Everybody in higher ed will tell you they're doing critical thinking. Uh, not entirely sure that's uh, accurate, 
Um, and so we'll talk a little bit more about what critical thinking is, but that's a really great resource. Uh, if you have time in your academic career, you should take Philosophy 100, which is general logic, which is really the foundation of critical thinking. So um, again, some of you probably not going to backtrack to get that before the GRE, but uh, if you do have a chance uh, to take that class, that would be really good, either from Fort Hayes or some other university. General logic like that is um, very, very helpful. A lot of things that parade as critical thinking in popular culture really aren't um, all that helpful. So let's talk about the, um, the test just a little bit, and then we'll give some definitions, and then we'll take some examples. So the uh, GRE analytic writing measure is really two separate tests. The first is, uh, they're both 30 minutes, the first is what they call analyze an issue. Uh, and they're going to give you an issue that you'll have to um, take apart and put back together again and come to some kind of a conclusion. And then the second part is an ar analyze an argument. So they're going to give you an argument and you're going to have to tell um, why it is or is not a good argument. What's good about the argument and what's bad about the argument. So and we'll talk, uh, obviously, take some examples to make some more sense of this. But uh, when you hear critical thinking, what do you think of? What do you think of? Or analytical writing. Thinking logically about something. Okay, thinking logically about something. Uh, you know what the next question is. What's to think logically? Black and white. Okay, black and white. So some gray. Yeah, maybe some gray. Um, the the um, one thing to remember when you're taking a test like this is it's never enough to state your opinion. Right? Uh, just because you have an opinion doesn't mean you've given a good argument or you've engaged in critical thinking. One way to think maybe about what critical thinking is is to think about what it's not. Critical thinking is usually associated with higher order thinking skills. And uh, higher order thinking skills, not surprisingly, are uh, contrasted with lower order thinking skills. Memorization, for example, is a lower order uh, thinking skill. It used to be very highly prized, and in some cultures, it still is very highly prized. Right? So if you were a son of a Brahmin in ancient India, uh, the extent of your intellectual development was really memorizing tens of thousands of lines of the Upanishad so that you could spit them back out. Now we have Google. <laughs> Memorization doesn't really help us that much, right? I could memorize the entire Old Testament, uh, and you could memorize none of it, and you could Google it and have your answer just as fast as I can recall it from my brain. Right? So memorization is a lower order thinking skill. Critical thinking involves higher order thinking skills. And in particular, we're thinking about um, analyzing complex issues. What is it to analyze? Not necessarily analysis in the psychological sense, but what is it to analyze something? To look for patterns. Yeah, look for patterns, to take it apart, right? to see what's stated and maybe what's unstated. This would be a big part of the exam, is looking at hidden assumptions. Uh, another critical thinking, higher order critical thinking skill is synthesis. That's where you're putting things together, right? You're you're building a case. And so in the analyze an issue task, you are going to be looking at a sort of a general issue and trying to make an argument uh, for or against. In the analyze an argument, you're going to be uh, looking at somebody else's argument on a general topic and identifying uh, you know, its strengths and weaknesses. So when we think about critical thinking, we can break it down in, in a variety of different ways, but um, oops, I like the, uh, this comes from the, the website that I talked about just a little bit ago, and you can uh, 
go to that website and get, get this uh, little handout. Let's see. sort of a diagram of how um, analysis works. So whenever we think about a particular topic, we think about it for a purpose. And we have that purpose within a particular point of view. So for example, if we're um, you know, a scientist or a historian, we're going to be looking at a particular problem, say the Vietnam War, from a particular perspective from a historical perspective, or if we're an archaeologist, we're going to be looking at it from a slightly different perspective. And that perspective is based on assumptions. So if you're a scientist, what are some of your assumptions that guide your point of view, just really generally? How does science approach topics in a way that religion, for example, would not approach? Hard things that you can see. Yeah, empirical evidence, yeah. right? What counts as truth in the sciences is empirical evidence. That's often unstated, right? Scientists don't start their paper saying, I believe in empirical evidence, right? Uh, when science was first getting started, they had to do that, right? Because for most of human history, evidence was based more in authority uh, and power than it was in empirical evidence. Okay, so based on assumptions, we're going to talk about this as we go through. Uh, leading to implications and consequences, right? So whenever we think about something, it's leading towards a consequence or an implication, an outcome, or in logic as we call it, a conclusion, right? And in order to get there, we use data, we use facts, we use, in certain cases, personal experiences, right? And we use those to make inferences and judgments. We do that based on concepts and theories in order to solve our problems. Now, I don't expect you to get all that. You're certainly not going to have that in the back of your mind necessarily when you're writing out your GRE answers. But you can see, I hope, just a, a taste of how complicated critical thinking is. And critical thinking, to do it well, involves being aware of some of this complexity. Uh, often our arguments, for example, in popular culture, are, are less really arguments than they are sort of shouting matches, in part because people are coming at things from different points of view or with different assumptions. Right. And so, uh, you know, uh, they come to very different conclusions. And if we're not aware of our own assumptions or we're not aware of our, our perspective or our point of view, uh, we can get ourselves into, um, into trouble with critical thinking. So let's talk a little bit then about uh, what an argument looks like in terms of critical thinking and what kinds of arguments you're going to be looking for. In the critical thinking section of the GRE, you're going to be doing what logicians call case building arguments. So again, I won't bore you with all the other types of arguments. There's deductive inferences um, and other types of arguments. But a case building argument is going to take a variety of facts and experiences and judgments or values to reach a conclusion. So I think of case building arguments as uh, what you would experience if you were at the closing arguments of a, of a jury trial. A lawyer builds a case, right? And she does that by drawing all sorts of different types of facts. She might draw on, you know, uh, empirical data or scientific theories, but she's also going to draw on, you know, Bob's history with his wife and, uh, you know, what the uh, neighbor saw on Tuesday night, right? And the lawyer's gonna try and build this all up to a final conclusion, which is, you know, Bob is guilty, or Bob is innocent, depending on which side she's on. So, uh, case building arguments, when you get to the GRE, 
on both of the sections, you're going to get a kind of a case building situation. In one um, part of the exam, you're building the case. Right? On the other part of the exam, somebody else built the case and you're pulling it apart and poking holes in it. Right? Like you would be the defense lawyer in that situation. Okay? So in, um, in logic then, we talk about arguments in a standard way and uh, we use the word premise, it can be spelled a couple of different ways, and conclusion for the outcome. In logic, the goal is to build an argument where the premises are statements which lead to the conclusion. Right? So, uh, Bob was seen with a black mask on wandering around near the burglarized house at 3 in the morning. Okay. Uh, premise 2, it was not Halloween. <laughs> Conclusion, Bob broke in. Okay. Bob did the burglary. Okay. Now, um, the conclusion, and this is important, in ordinary everyday arguments and in what you're going to encounter on the test, the conclusion can come anywhere. A lot of times the conclusion can come at the very beginning. Now you see this a lot in politics, right? Um, you know, we should make America great again. And in order to do that, we got to, you know, do X, Y, and Z. And that will make America great again, or something like that. So, uh, in uh, logic class, we always like to put the premises first and the conclusion last, but that's not the way it will always occur. And so one of your jobs in the um, analysis of the other person's argument is to make sure that you identify the conclusion correctly. If you don't identify their conclusion correctly, your analysis is going to be totally off. Does that make sense? And again, we'll take some examples of this. Similarly, when you build your case, you got to be clear about how your premises lead to your conclusion. How your premises lead to your conclusion. Uh, really important. Okay, so you've got a case building kind of argument that you're going to be either analyzing or you're going to be building yourself. And let's, uh, actually let's take a minute for questions here about uh, what I've said so far? Perfectly clear. Okay, so let's take some examples, and I'm hoping I can zoom in the computer better than I can zoom in the document camera right here. Okay, so let's take an example here. Okay, so I'll read this. As people rely more and more on technology to solve problems, the ability of humans to think for themselves will surely deteriorate. Now, I'll give you a hint here. They're never going to give you uh, really specific sorts of things, really, really outrageously terrible arguments or really, really perfectly uh, cogent arguments, right? It's always going to be somewhere in the middle because they want to see if you can figure out, right? If it's a really crappy argument, of course, it's going to be really obvious that it's terrible and everybody's going to get an A on that section, right? Uh, and or vice versa, right? If, if, it's a, if it's a really, really great argument and you can't find anything wrong with it, then it really is not going to tell them who knows how to think critically and who doesn't. So, Notice there's nothing specific in here. All of you in this room, myself included, could come to some reasonable uh, argument about the, um, the topic here. So what do you think? As people rely more and more on technology to solve problems, the ability to think of humans to think for themselves will surely deteriorate. What's the argument here? What is it? 
uh, look like? What are the parts of the argument uh, that you can see there? 